won an unprecedented mandate. <clears throat> I think it is uh, fully well deserved. Um, I would also like to remind uh, members of this House that uh, I think it is the NPP party in the last parliament and our party that refused to speak to uh, uh, the uh, President uh, Ranil Vikramasinghe's government uh, because we believed that he did not have a mandate. So when we uh, consider the words of uh, uh, President Androkumar Adisanayake with regards to democracy or the lack of it in the past <coughs> and his references to that term whilst he made his policy statement, uh, I would like to remind him that our party uh, was one that stood uh, consistently along with uh, the NPP in uh, refusing to engage with, uh, with a government that we believed was a rogue government that did not have a mandate. Uh, I would like to particularly welcome Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker he, he, the President's uh, following comments. He says uh, on page one of his speech, uh, it's the English speech that I'm uh, reading from, I also acknowledge that there are communities that uh, did not trust us but instead place their faith in other political movements. The essence of democracy lies in the coexistence of diverse political ideologies and groups. Our government and I are committed to fulfilling the needs and aspirations of the citizens of every community, both those who voted for us and those who did not. I make uh, specific reference, Honorable Deputy Speaker, to, the, to, the, to those uh, three uh, paragraphs uh, because uh, subsequently he goes on to say this, uh, which is a very important uh, part of his uh, policy and this government's policy, which is we will not allow, uh, we will not allow ethnic uh, based politics in our country. Similarly, we will not tolerate religious extremism. We are a people who have, uh, who have suffered enough from ethnic conflict. Now, I make that uh, particular reference because I believe there is a, a possibility of a contradiction with regards to the first three paragraphs that I quoted and this particular paragraph. Now, President Androkumar Disanayaka during the campaign and, and the NPP have uh, made it quite clear that they are against racism. And the terms that they use with regards to racism is nationalistic politics uh, and, uh, 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 and religious extremism. Those are the, those are the general terms uh, that are being used. Now, I would like to remind uh, the uh, president and the government that our party, the All Ceylon Tamil Congress, which I represent in parliament, uh, and the Tamil National People's Front, the All Ceylon Tamil Congress, which is the oldest Tamil political party in, in Sri Lanka, uh, believed in a Sri Lankan identity. Uh, we were a party that uh, believed in working with the uh, governments of the day. Uh, we joined governments. Uh, our leader, uh, G.G. Ponnamblam, became uh, a cabinet minister. Uh, and uh, we believed in fully cooperating. Uh, you know, the, as long as the Tamil identity was protected. We felt uh, that a Sri Lankan all-encompassing identity is what is best for Sri Lanka. But unfortunately, if you look at the 75-76 uh, year history of, uh, of this country, uh, that Sri Lankan identity has been just a facade for what is essentially a singular Buddhist, uh, almost a racist identity. Uh, to, to simply say that we are all Sri Lankan uh, in, a, in a country where Singhala Buddhism, Singhala Buddhist nationalism has become the mainstay of, uh, of, of politics to the exclusion of all other identities, to the exclusion of all identities. I say it very particularly because in the previous government also, in the previous parliaments also, uh, this notion of racism was spoken. Mahindra Rajapaksa spoke of racism. It, it is Gotabe Rajapaksa spoke of racism and that we, we shouldn't uh, accept it. But their version of racism was when the Tamil people, after 75 years of distinct racism against the Tamil people, where we have been disenfranchised, 
where our lands have been grabbed, where the ethnic composition of the Northeast has been systematically, systematically uh, tampered with, uh, where uh, uh, colonization took place. Even today, just before this government coming into power, uh, colonization schemes were taking place in the East, in, if, if, if I am to mention a few, in Batiklo, if you uh, take Batiklo, Mailatham uh, and Madhavane, areas where there is a distinct colonization project that is going on, in Vavunia, in the north of Vavunia. So, you know, to talk in terms of racism, when the Tamils have brought up the issues that we have had faced for over 75 years, in being deliberately targeted in areas that we have historically habited, where we, our ethnic composition has been systematically changed, altered by the state policies, and when we rebel against those policies of the state, there is a potential for this last paragraph that His Excellency uh, mentions uh, to be also coined by this government uh, as racism. So I would like clarifications because, you see, after 75 years of systematic anti-Tamilness in the Northeast, which is, uh, which is the, our areas of historical habitation, uh, when we talk of our discrimination uh, and the racism that has been meted out against us, to simply say that we, no, we must not talk about Tamil, Sinhalese, we must talk of Sri Lankan, is to simply erase that history of discrimination, of racism that has been meted out for 75 years against the Tamil people. It is a systematic racism. For example, Honorable Deputy Speaker, uh, in the Human Rights, uh, in the Human Rights uh, Council in the UN, uh, Prince Zaid, who was the Human Rights uh, High Commissioner, made it a point. He said that Sri Lanka cannot have an internal inquiry, an entirely internal inquiry for accountability because of the ethnic conflict, because of the history of the ethnic conflict for over 35 years, that the the uh, institution of government have been so corrupted that they cannot deliver justice, particularly in an ethnic conflict sense. So these are important realities that we must address if we are to ever genuinely create security for all ethnicities, security for the Tamil people in particular who believe that they have been... Uh, who, member, they, you have one more minute. Who, 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 ...who they believe have been discriminated against. Uh, and without doing that, uh, to simply say that we must only talk in terms of a Sri Lankan identity is going to make uh, matters worse. I would also, since I have such little time, uh, mention uh, one more thing. I think the whole of today we spoke in terms of the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Honourable Deputy Speaker, Memorialization of the Tamil people with regards to the LTTE carders who have died, as well as the Tamil people who lost their lives, is identical, is no different from the JVP's memorialization. There cannot be any difference. Both those armed struggles were silenced by the state. And both those armed struggles were legitimate. There were legitimate reasons why people were forced to take up arms. That is where we come from. So without addressing those legitimate reasons and finding solutions, to simply allow one as completely unbanned and being allowed to uh, commemorate, whereas the other uh, to have certain restrictions I don't believe is fair. Especially, especially because those restrictions are based on a circular uh, that, was, uh, that, that came, up, came into being in 2011. The very same government that your present government calls a racist government. So when that government has come up with a circular that is today being applied with regards to how you can commemorate or the restrictions with regards to commemoration, I think it is completely unfair and I, uh, and, and I strongly urge, I strongly urge this government to put that mistake right. I also would like to say that the PTA must not Honorable be member, used your time at is all, up. not only in the Northeast, but also in the South. There are provisions within the penal code, there are provisions between various other uh, legal instruments that the, uh, that the police uh, and other uh, uh, authorities can use. The PTA certainly is not one of them, and it is important because the, the police use the PTA as a weapon. They use it to prevent bail. They use it to punish 
before you can even face justice. And that must be completely, completely uh, uh, not allowed, uh, Honourable uh, Deputy Speaker. In that sense, I would urge my good friend, the Minister of Justice, is someone I go back a long way. We were. Uh, we were in uh, we were in bar school together in uh, in London. I know him uh, in a, in a totally different incarnation. We won't talk about that in this house. But uh, but uh, so I, I certainly have a lot of trust in him. I have a lot of respect for him. I know that he's certainly uh, not a member who can be categorised as uh, uh, communal minded or, or, or as uh, having a strong singular uh, member, your time bias. Is up. Uh, and I would urge him uh, to look into this matter. Uh, as well as uh, the question of uh, Tamil political prisoners. There are nine uh, who still uh, continue to be incarcerated. Uh, I would urge for you to, uh, to release them as early as possible. I would like to mention one individual. Uh, he has, uh, he's a, uh, he, uh, he, a member called Morris. He's known as Morris. I think, uh, I think the Honorable President uh, knows him. Uh, I think the Honorable Vijita Herat uh, knows him. Uh, he has been transferred without any reason uh, from the Colombo mag uh, magazine prison uh, to Hambantota, uh, and that was a victimization because the person uh, previously uh, made the transfer and, and, and retired. Uh, there is no reason uh, whatsoever for that up. transfer. I would urge you to have an inquiry with regards to that. Thank you.